And as of today, we have officially rebranded the show to Packer Ventline. It is no longer called Mackie and Jet with Rami. <laughs> we are just going to play clips about Packer drama. That's become the show here, boys. <laughs> Rob Domofsky. When was Rob Domofsky on Purple Daily today, Jonathan? Uh, three o'clock. So this happened about an hour ago. I'm just going to play this here. If you missed it, Bob McGinn, who writes for The Athletic now. Yes. Longtime Packers writer and reporter. Bob McGinn, in a nutshell, said the Packers and Matt LaFleur drafted Jordan Love because they are sick of Aaron Rodgers' act, and they wanted to regain some leverage in their relationship with Aaron Rodgers. Which, on its own, is amazing. <laughs> digest that for a second. Let's light a first-round pick on fire in some ways just to gain <laughs> leverage over our Hall of Fame quarterback. <laughs> That's how spoiled we are in Green Bay. This is Rob Domofsky from ESPN.com. Bob could not be more wrong. Uh, Bob's completely full of crap on that. Um, look, a general manager, and this is the way it's, it's structured in Green Bay, and Bob should know it. The general manager makes the call on the, on the draft and the players. The head coach does not. Trust me, Matt LaFleur would have loved to have uh, a receiver, loved to have somebody that could help his offense. This, this Jordan Love pick does not help Matt LaFleur and it, now, and it may never help him. And here's why. Let's say they, they regress and go 9-7 and seven this year. Um, Rodgers further declines and they go six and ten seven and nine the third year Matt LaFleur should get fired without ever coaching Jordan Love this is not this this is Bob is completely wrong now could could Brian Gutekunst be tired of Aaron Rodgers and how he uh, you know maybe his, his body language when he when receivers don't do what he wants sure he could be tired of it and here's another theory about that why would Gutekunst draft a receiver really high when there's a halfway decent chance his quarterback won't like him. So now you've wasted that pick because Rodgers is so hard on guys. So maybe there's that to it. But look, (laughs) um, this is not, this was not a Matt LaFleur pick in any way, shape or form. I will soon hopefully have a piece on air on ESPN.com this week about the dynamics that went into it. And I can promise you that it will, it will say that LaFleur, um, this was not a Matt LaFleur driven All right, pick. so who do you guys side with in, <laughs> in in rivalry drama here across the border? Bob McGinn saying that the Packers did this to throw a jab at Aaron Rodgers or Rob Domofsky for saying not so fast, my friend? I don't know if that was the direct intent of what they did, but you don't use a first-round pick on the next quarterback if everything is hunky-dory with the current quarterback, right? I mean, that just doing the math. And what Bob McGinn says on some level kind of jibes with what Adam Schefter was reporting immediately after that pick, which is that Matt LaFleur fell in love with Jordan Love and wanted him in the quarterback room. He wanted Jordan Love. So I don't think he's he's right that and especially with the Green Bay Packers, they very much follow the structure of authority. You know what I mean? And the, the chain of command. You have a GM. He makes personnel calls. You have a coach, and yes, they work together, but his job is to coach the 90 guys that is given to him by the GM and the front office. I don't doubt what Rob is saying there, but to think that Matt LaFleur had no say in it, I, I think is is kind of foolish. I think he did have say in it, and while I don't think the direct intent was to gain leverage over Aaron Rodgers, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some butting of heads between those two, and Matt LaFleur on some level isn't going... Look, if you don't want to work with me, I I have a plan B. I have another option here if you don't want to work with me. I wow. I believe that there there was friction there, and I, I thought there would be from day one because Aaron Rodgers always thinks he's the smartest guy in the room. And to bring in a first-time head coach, one of the youngest head coaches in the league, and think that Aaron Rodgers is going to bow down and defer and do whatever that guy thinks is smart, I think was foolish I, 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 and was never going to work. And not to say that they can't coexist. But I do believe that there probably was some friction there. There probably was some butting of heads there. And we now have multiple reports of people saying Matt LaFleur loves his new quarterback and wanted Jordan Love with the Green Bay Packers. I think, and this is never the the sexy answer to give. It's never the hot takey answer to give with, with what we do. It's always take a side. And that's the way to make a name for yourself in this business. But I think the truth probably lies somewhere between what Rob is saying and what Bob McGinn are saying. I think the truth is we can't lose here. 
This is just no, that's, fantastic. That's a great, that's a great take We've too. got reporters brawling. We've got GMs possibly usurping quarterbacks. We've got a coach who's possibly trying to get at his QB. My hot take is we win. <laughs> and if you're a Vikings fan, you really win. For now. For we now. We win for now. Okay. Okay. We can enjoy the story for now. Okay. But, it, but, but I'll caution you the two things that I've been cautioning people of since the draft. One, the way things have gone for the Packers and the rest of the division when it comes to quarterbacks, Jordan Love is the next great thing. And two, a pissed off Aaron Rodgers who has fueled his career on people doubting him and proving those people wrong now has his own franchise doubting him and he's trying to prove them wrong. That could be a dangerous thing for the rest of us. Just, just pumping the brakes and putting and, and, and emphasizing a little bit of caution in how much we enjoy this. Let's enjoy it right now, but let's realize what this could mean in the future. Ordinarily though, ordinarily the dysfunction, the backbiting infighting is where the Vikings, right? Oh yeah. This very much feels, and who knows, Rami might be right. Jordan Love might turn out to be great. But this very much feels like the brawls and the backbiting uh, is continuing in Green Bay. And I, I would say this about the Packers. I don't think there's been a lot of times since uh, Brett got there in 92 that we could flat out sit here and say, you're the dysfunctional ones. This feels like the Packers are the dysfunctional ones, mm -hmm. which is great fun. And and if you're a Vikings fan, it's very odd because ordinarily it's what? Um, it's something going on with Brad Childress or it's something going on with Dante Culpepper or it's something, you know, take your pick. It's the love boat. This feels like the shoe is on the other foot for once and the Green Bay Packers feel like they've become dysfunctional. And that's what I'm enjoying. Also, too, when you hear stories like this, very rarely are they just made up out of whole cloth, right? Do you think a guy who's been covering the NFL and the Packers for 40 years, and I get that, like, I, I, I went through I went through some of the replies to the article on Twitter, and, of course, like, 20% of people are saying, Bob McGinn's always wrong, right? Okay, so maybe Bob McGinn's batting. I, I haven't checked his batting average, but it's not 1,000, all right? So Bob McGinn's batting average might not be 1,000. But when when the team drafts a quarterback in the first round – and then a guy who's been covering the team for like 40 years comes out and says, oh, yeah. Yeah, the relationship between Matt LaFleur and Aaron Rodgers is not that great. And quite frankly, they're just kind of sick of Aaron Rodgers act. All right. You can't tell me that it means nothing. All due respect to Rob Domofsky, who's a friend of the show. And like like Rob Domofsky is an awesome reporter in his own right. But you can't tell me that it's just completely. Oh, just throw it away. No, it, it, they're, they just drafted a quarterback for four years from now. That's what they did with them when they drafted Aaron Rodgers. No, like this is more than just, oh boy, you guys realize Aaron Rodgers is like 36. We should probably draft a quarterback. There's more to it than than that in my mind. And that's why it's just delicious from a Vikings perspective to watch the Packers self-sabotage like this. It's just hilarious. This is good drama amazing. though, boys. This is it. good, good National Football League drama right here.